How's it going everyone, it is Panchino here and in this video we're going to be covering how to get the best FPS possible in Call of Duty Vanguard. Whether you've got a brand new ultra high end PC or some older lower end hardware, this video is going to be perfect for achieving the best FPS possible, reducing your input latency and giving you the most competitive advantage with the best settings possible for the fastest and snappiest feeling game. If you guys do enjoy this video, please do leave a like and a comment to help out with the YouTube algorithm as it does help out tremendously. Before we jump into the optimizations, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends is a dark fantasy mobile RPG available for both iOS and Android and PC, where you can progress and form your own team of champions, picking from a few of the many factions included with inside of the game, where you can go on more traditional style dungeon runs, clan boss fights, story missions, or if you're wanting some real competition, you could also jump into the PvP arena. With fantastic graphics and great optimizations, offering a beautiful and fluid gameplay experience, and you can assemble your team of champions from the multiple factions with inside of the game, from factions such as Dwarves, which have a ton of variety variety in both gameplay and design, offering tons of ways to play. Or we'll jump into some of the new content coming in the huge update to Raid this month, where they have a special event happening every day this month, awesome new champions, and the launch of Guardian Ring. A new feature that gives you loads of ways to use your champions, including a whole new faction Guardian system, and a new way to obtain legendary champions you've missed out on in the past. There's never been a better time to play Raid. And if you want a good head start jumping into Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description down below, or scan the QR code on screen now, where new players will be gifted the free epic champion Chinoru, an additional 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill and an ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion of your own as soon as you jump into the game using that link in the description down below. And again a massive thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Jumping into the optimizations we can first of all start by navigating inside of the Battle.net launcher. Once inside of it navigate to the top left hand side to the Battle.net logo then select settings. Start by going down to the on game launch set this to exit battle.net completely. Proceed to then scroll down and ensure that both use browser hardware acceleration and allow multiple instances of Battle.net are both unchecked. With that set, go down to Game Settings, go to Call of Duty Vanguard, go to the drop down menu next to this, then select Additional Command Line Arguments. Going to the text box and typing in dash D3D11. We then need to apply some optimization fixes to the game EXE itself, once again to help fix crashes and stabilize the frame rate. For this, navigate down to the settings cog of the game, then go to Show in Explorer. Inside of the game installation folder, proceed to scroll down until you find Vanguard and Vanguard Launcher. Now we're going to be applying this optimization to both the Vanguard Launcher and Vanguard EXE. Right click, go to properties, go to the compatibility tab. You want to ensure that you're running this as an administrator. This can help fix most game crashes, including the ones where you're changing your in-game settings and the game crashes entirely. With that selected, go down to change high DPI settings and override the high DPI at the bottom, select okay, apply and okay. Proceed to do the same optimization for the Vanguard Launcher, compatibility, run as admin, change our DPI, override, OK, apply and OK. Once you've booted into the main menu, take yourself to the bottom left hand side and start by going to your settings. Inside of this menu, take yourself down to the bottom to the telemetry options and enable the FPS counter. You can also scroll down and enable any of these other options which are available with inside of here so you can monitor your statistics whilst inside of games. Scroll all the way to the bottom of this tab and make sure that skip intro movie has been selected to on. Before we jump into the graphics tab to go through all of the best settings, it's actually recommended to do this whilst inside of a private match so whenever we change any of our in-game settings, you can see how they affect your visuals and performance live to see which is best for your system. You can choose to add bots to this if you wish to do so for a closer representation of how your FPS will be in a live match. Once you've booted into your private match, we can go into the graphics settings. Display mode is going to be set to full screen for every single person watching for the best FPS possible and the lowest level of input latency. Your display resolution should be set to auto or the highest resolution available, which should match your monitor's native resolution. Refresh rate should be set to as high as possible. V-Sync off, V-Sync menus off. Frame rate limit should be set to unlimited rather than custom. Aspect ratio automatic. Focused mode is personal preference. I'm gonna be keeping this off. We can then navigate down to on-demand texture streaming. Click the up arrow on this to bring up the full Option. For the best FPS possible, every single person watching this video should have on-demand texture streaming enabled. There are some rumors that this could be causing a packet burst issue with inside of the game though, so if you do experience any lag with inside of your game with this turned on, do turn this off. Render resolution is going to be kept at 100. Dynamic resolution is going to be turned off for now. For details and textures, we're going to be setting this up for the best performance possible, regardless of how good or bad your system is. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see a few more options in which you may want to adjust slightly higher if you do want a higher level of visual fidelity, but for the best performance 
possible, these are going to be my recommended settings. Texture resolution, go with very low for the best performance possible, otherwise go with medium. Texture filtering anisotropic, best FPS possible is going to be very low, otherwise go with medium. Particle quality level is going to be set to very low. Particle resolution is going to be set to low. Bullet impacts and sprays are going to be turned off. Shader quality should be turned to low, tessellation turned off. Level of detail distance range is going to depend on the maps in which you're playing and the modes. I would personally put this on either short or standard. Nearby level of detail is going to be set to low for the best performance or high if you wish to favor visual quality. Distant level of detail is going to match the level of detail distance range that you set earlier. Clutter draw distance is going to be set to low. Volumetric quality level low. Screen space shadows are going to be switched off. Shadow map resolution is going to go down to very low. Sun shadow cascades are going to be turned to low. Cache sun shadows and cache spot shadows are both going to be enabled. Spot cache size is going to be set to either very low or if you're running on higher settings go with medium. Particle lighting, for the best FPS possible we're going to be going with low but the best competitive advantage will come with high as this will smoothen the look of some smoke effects with inside of the map making it easier to see through them. Ambient occlusion is going to be switched to off. Select the show more option and ensure that GTAO quality is also switched to low. Screen space reflections are going to be switched off. With those options then set, we're now left with NVIDIA DLSS, Fidelity CAS, and Fidelity FX Super Resolution. On the right hand side of the screen now, you'll be seeing the suggestions for that. For those of you that are looking for the best visual fidelity possible, you want to be running Fidelity FX CAS, regardless if you're running on an NVIDIA card or an AMD Radeon card. Enabling Fidelity FX CAS, going down to show more, and making sure this is set to 0.80 is going to give you the best graphics possible. When you go back inside of your game, you'll notice that it almost looks like you're playing your game in a way higher resolution. The Fidelity FX CAS implementation inside of Call of Duty Vanguard is absolutely fantastic and once you enable this option you're going to find it hard to go back. This is honestly one of the most impressive settings I've ever seen in a game. But if you're setting your game up for a competitive advantage for the lowest level of input latency and best FPS possible you want to be going with Fidelity FX Super Resolution. To enable this disable either DLSS or Fidelity CAS then enable Super Resolution. My personal recommendation would be to set this to balanced for every single resolution out there unless you're running 1080p where you you may want to go with quality. You'll notice that it won't look as good as it did with Fidelity FX CAS, but you should be seeing an incredible FPS boost from using this. If you must go with DLSS, my personal recommendation would be balanced. It does provide a relatively nice looking image that's pretty smooth, but FSR is going to be giving you better FPS, and Fidelity FX CAS is going to be increasing your graphics, so just stick with those two settings, and you can use them on any graphics card. Anti-aliasing is going to be set to SMAA two times. Go to the drop down menu and set your anti-aliasing quality to low. Navigating down to depth of field, turning this to off, and VRAM usage target, we're going to be upping this to 90. Last but not least, we can take ourselves over to the gameplay section where we can then set our field of view. For the best FPS possible, it's recommended to either use 103 or 110. Wild motion blur, weapon motion blur should both be turned off. You can also turn down your camera movement, which I would recommend down to 50%, which will stop the screen shake, especially when you're sprinting. Last but not least, navigating down to Nvidia Reflex. If you do have this option available to you, go to on plus boost. Try this setting out, if you do notice that you're running into any stuttering issues or your performance isn't 100% stable, you could also try just disabling Reflex. For this, take yourself down to the bottom left hand side to your file explorer. Navigate over to Documents, go inside of the Call of Duty Vanguard folder, Players, ADV underscore options dot INI. First of all, starting off with video memory scale. This option is recommended to be set to 0.9, but if you are running into game crashes quite frequently, change this down to 0.7. Render a work account is going to be set differently depending on what CPU you have, whether it be Intel or Ryzen. For Intel users, you want to be setting this to 6, but if you aren't noticing the best performance possible, you can also try 4. For Ryzen users, this needs to be set to half of your physical core count of your CPU. To find this, navigate down to your taskbar, right click, open task manager. For Windows 11 users, select Control alt delete on your keyboard and open up task manager that way. Go to the performance tab, click on CPU. So half of that is going to be six. So we're going to set my render work account to six. Clutter max distance, setting this to 100. Your maximum number of particles should be set to zero. Your pixel per light map texel is going to be set to one. Particle resolution is going to be set to zero. Corpses culling threshold is going to be set to one. Particle lighting quality is also going to be set to zero. Reflection probe relighting update stages is going to be set to one. Round robin priority spot shadows max is going to be set to zero. And sun shadow moment clip map resolution is going to be set to 64. Once that's then been set, take yourself to the top left hand side to file, 
then select save. Moving on to the GPU section, we first of all want to make sure that we have the best drivers installed for Vanguard for both Radeon and Nvidia users. First of all navigate inside of your task manager like we did earlier, this time going over to the performance tab. Under performance go all the way down on the left hand side and select your GPU. Go to the top right hand side of your GPU panel where you'll then be able to see the make and model of the GPU you are using. With that information take yourself into the description down below and either select the Nvidia drivers or the AMD Radeon drivers link. Now you can go with the latest driver but at the moment for Warzone, Vanguard and Modern Warfare, the best NVIDIA driver at the time of recording is actually going to be version 472.12. For NVIDIA users, you can also look into debloating your driver, which is a fantastic way of removing all of the excess features in which you don't use from your NVIDIA driver, freeing up performance and making your driver a lot more lightweight. Once you're running on the best driver for your system, for your NVIDIA and AMD Radeon control panel settings, right click on the desktop and open up your control panel. For NVIDIA users, navigate to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview, select the middle option for use the advanced 3D image settings, then select apply. This time navigating over to manage 3D settings on the left hand side, proceed to scroll down to your power management mode, take this off of normal and set this to prefer maximum performance, set your preferred refresh rate to the highest available. If you do have the option for shader cache size depending on which driver you install, Installed, go to the drop down menu for this, we can either leave this set to driver default, or personally for me I like to run 10 gig. This comes down to how much space is free on your Windows C drive. If you have a fair amount of space free on the Windows C drive, set this to 10 gig, otherwise go with driver default. Anisotropic sample optimization is recommended to have this turned on, and for an incredibly important option, make sure that texture filtering quality is changed from quality and set to high performance. With those optimizations then set, select apply. If you're wanting to use Nvidia filters with inside of the game, but you don't want the FPS hit from using them, you can also take yourself over to Adjust Desktop Color Settings, navigate down to the Digital Vibrance tab. Turning this higher or lower is going to change the saturation of your screen, giving you 90% of what an NVIDIA filter can do with inside of the game with absolutely no FPS hit. With the best GPU drivers installed and set up correctly for your control panel, the only other optimization for GPUs I can recommend is to apply a small to moderate GPU overclock, and will provide you anywhere from an extra 5 to 15% performance increase depending on the scenario in which you are in. If you are interested about GPU overclocking, make sure that you do check out the video on the screen now and also linked in the description down below. For some basic Windows optimizations and settings to further enhance performance for your system, whether that be a low end or a high end system, going to the bottom left hand side, typing in game space mode, then pressing enter. For Windows game mode, this is recommended to have this turned off for those of you running on ultra high end systems, such as an RTX 30 series or an RX 6000 Radeon GPU. For those of you running on anything lower end than that, even if you've still got quite a decent PC, turn this on. For the next setting, we need to navigate down to the bottom left once again, this time typing in GPU space settings, then clicking on the graphics settings tab. Inside of the graphics preference tab, if you do have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling available to you, it is not recommended to use this if you are on a high end RTX 30 30 series GPU. If you're on an RTX 20 series or anything lower than this, go ahead and turn this on. The next optimization is relatively basic, but it goes for every single game you're playing and will improve performance across the board. For this, navigate down to your task bar, right click, and open up Task Manager. For those of you running on Windows 11, simply press Ctrl Alt Delete on your keyboard, then select Task Manager. Go up to the Startup tab. Inside of here, these are all of the programs which are going to boot automatically every single time you turn on your PC and log in. We want to remove as many of these programs from this list as possible. This doesn't mean you won't be able to use the programs, it just means that they won't boot automatically, slowing down your startup. Simply find a program you don't need to boot with your PC, highlight it, go to the bottom, select disable. This is especially important for game launchers as many people like to have these open up automatically but every game launcher you're running is taking up CPU cycles and you only need one at a time. Once you're done with inside of there it's also good practice to quickly close out of those programs that may be open by going down to your task icon tray in the bottom right, selecting the up arrow and start right clicking and closing out of these programs you don't need. For instance if we're playing Vanguard we don't need Steam open, other game launchers and other apps. For those of you using a Chromium based browser such as Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, take yourself to the top right hand side to your three dots, go down to the settings panel. Inside of here go to advanced on the left hand side, then go down to system. We want to ensure that continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed is disabled. Defaultly, unless you've turned this off, every single time Google Chrome is closed, it actually keeps your browser extensions running in the background, soaking up resources. Having this turned off will mean that every single time you press that X button, the browser is 100% closed. For one of the last final and incredibly important basic Windows optimizations comes in the form of the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner, which can be found linked in the description down below. It's completely free. Once you're on the website, scroll down to the official download here section 
section. Once the program is finished downloading, select open. Go to the three dots on the right hand side, then select desktop, select OK, then extract. To set up the program, double click, then open up the intelligent standby list cleaner.exe. For the first box, set this to 1024. The second box needs to be set to half of your system memory, which you can find in the top left hand side. So for me that's 32,000, and half of that is 16,000. We can then navigate over to the wanted time resolution box on the right hand side, type in 0 0.50, then use your delete key to remove the extra values. Go down to the ISOC polling rate, set this to 500 for high end systems, medium end and low end systems go with 1000. Select enable custom time resolution and before we press start on this program you can currently see I'm using 14 gigabyte of memory in my reserve. Once we select purge standby list and start we've now freed up 14 gigabytes of my available memory. My recommendation would be to start this program just like this, minimize it then go play your favorite. We can now go through some quick fire fixes for any of you that may be experiencing crashes or instability with inside of Vanguard. First of all you can try putting in the launch command dash d3d11 into your game via the battle.net settings. Make sure that you've turned off on demand text streaming with inside of the game. You will see slightly lower FPS from this, but you will see more stability. Turn off any GPU overclocks in which you may have. Make sure that you're running both the launcher and the game application as admin. Implement an FPS cap using the in-game FPS settings set to custom and set this to your monitor's refresh rate. You could also try deleting your configs folder from the documents folder, booting up the game again and generating brand new config files. And last but not least, if you do have MSI Afterburner available to you, you can also lower the power limit of your graphics card by either 10 or 20%, which will lower the GPU usage, cooling down your temperatures, slightly reducing performance, but this could fix your crashing issues. And that concludes the FPS guide for Call of Duty Vanguard. Your game should now feel absolutely fantastic, extremely snappy and fast, and you should see a significant FPS boost. If you've got any other tips or tricks for Call of Duty Vanguard, make sure to share them in the comment section down below and leave a like on the video to help out with the YouTube algorithm. If you are serious about game optimization and wish to get more out of your system without having to spend a penny, check out the video on screen now.